Hello, this is Emily and I'm with um, Yesterday Stash and my YouTube channel is Emily R. Strader. I'm here this afternoon because I found something interesting here of late and it's uh, called um, basil paper. Um, you probably can't see it because of the, uh, but it's pleated. Well, basil is the name of a brand um, and it rhymes with razzle. Um, to bedazzle someone is basil. And it, this is called basil, B-A-Z-Z-I-L-L, -L, basics paper. And it's supposed to be a really good quality paper. Uh, but I had already always associated it with um, pleated paper. And so um, I found some and I decided that I would I needed to, to work on um, these these uh, what these pleated papers look like now if, if you sew at all you should be able to do the same thing that these pleated papers do let me show you this one because maybe it is easier to see this is a gray and you can see where they have just simply folded it into a pleat and uh, then they have um, just done a straight stitch down um, down the middle well, you and I can pleat, uh, you know, and you know, can pleat paper without needing to, to get uh, this basil paper. But I thought that I would just show you, you know, what, what some of it looks like. And that led, led me into how do, uh, how all the different things besides paper that one could use um, to pleat paper. Or, um, but I mean, Basil is really a larger company. I just always thought it was only pleated paper, but it's really a larger company with a lot of, uh, of different uh, types of good quality paper. But, um, and I think, you know, maybe some places like Michael's, I'm not sure if they sell it. But anyway, this led me to a whole journey of how to find things to pleat. And I ran across, the first thing that I ran across in my stash was seam binding and uh, hem tape. Now you can get hem tape uh, in all different kinds of uh, ways. This particular one is sort of a, uh, a it's folded um, like this and you know you it's used as a binding it's also called a binding um, people use it for all sorts of things um, they use wider ones for uh, binding uh, blankets for instance and hem tape of course for uh, for uh, hemming uh, our clothes and um, this type of thing could easily be pleated so um, this is called extra wide double, let's see, this was 50 cents uh, at my junk store and um, it says uh, for easy use. So looking at, at these different papers um, or these different ple uh, binding and hem tapes, I thought that surely we could come up with or I could come up with or I could use this hem tape, um, I get this at my used book, my used junk store for usually 50 cents for a full thing and um, lesser if they have already been used. So um, I've been working on, so everything that I have been doing lately, I have been thinking about how I might use, um, use this uh, pleated paper to do different things with it. And one of the things that I have been working on is uh, this particular kit. Um, it's called the Garden Tea Party Stack. It's by DCWV. And it's, uh, I found it for $5 at my, um, at, a, at a junk store. And it just has beautiful paper. And so I thought if I could just find some things in my stash that go with this paper, it sure would be fun to um, 
to do something with it, make a, a tea journal or um, just a journal with different these different color um, and you know just sort of use some of these papers. Here's a whole, um, this one is a stack of tea, um, excuse me, tea uh, cups that have been stacked up. So it's just a really good, uh, you know, it's all in um, kind of a peach, coral, uh, sort of a, um, a uh, product. And so uh, I cut some out and I started figuring out how I could use different things to make pages and um, tags and join things together to um, make. So I looked through my stash and tried to find things that were that color. And um, this is a, would be, could be used to stick a picture in. It's just a little, it's got that, that family in it. This is a folder that I found in my stash that would have some of that in it. And then I started taking strips of, uh, actually this particular is um, uh, pattern paper. And I took a, a strip of uh, scrap paper. I'm sure you all have just, you know, uh, bags of strips of paper. And so I started going through the strips to see if I could find anything that was kind of this color. And then I used my coral um, distress ink on the side and also to showcase and practice uh, some of the different stitches uh, that I um, have on my sewing machine. And um, so that is something that I have been using. I found uh, a couple of different colors of... Um, ribbon or or um, lace that I could use uh, in uh, you know to combine this combine these together and I have got some tags uh, or some pocket possible pockets or tuck spots using different colors of this and then I found some um, you know ready-made that you can buy at the um, you know, at the, at the store, ready-made stacks of um, these types of um, note cards. And um, the I found some, um, some of the smash paper. And I also have these uh, little thoughtfuls that you can get. Um, and, you know, they, they are perforated on the edge and you open them up. But anyway, I thought that would be possibility. And I, I have a friend who is going into a, a nursing home. She's much older than I am. But um, she gave me a whole stack of stuff that was from her mother's house. So it's really old. And this is a sleeve that I guess well, back in the day when these types of sleeves were, were popular, you know, you'd put this on your hand and you would have this. And... It has a really interesting little uh, darts or tucks here and then goes down and widens up into a nice trim, which I thought I would take the trim off of this and, and wash it and that that would certainly be something that would go with it. So the whole thing started with my wanting to come up with ways to use pleats and I've ended up... Uh, you know, kind of creating or designing a book uh, around a certain color scheme. This is also uh, that has had the, has the pleats on it, and it's just a zigzag stitch. Um, and then I have a backing on it. But um, just to, to show some of the different things that uh, just you can take any any uh, idea and come up with how to make pleats in it, even if it's paper pleats. An another thing that I found that I thought might be fun to make pleated paper with is uh, ribbon that you can buy, you know, uh, at the, at the um, you can, you know, Michael's or uh, most, most places, and it's got this um, uh, wire in it. Well, I pulled the wire out and found that I could actually uh, cut it 
and put a, a, um, a, a trim on, I, you know, ravel it. And, you know, this would make a really good something to pleat. So I probably have a couple of, in my stash, I've got a couple of things that I've been pleating with that. Here's another one, it's a copper color, and it too had uh, that wire in it, which I pulled the wire out and I cut the um, inside of it with, um, with decorative scissors and to try to come up with uh, something that was wide enough that I could use to be pleated. And, and you know, this is actually almost a, a mesh, uh, uh, fused uh, mesh, uh, M-E-S-H, not mess, M-E-S-S, -S, mesh. That, uh, so anyway, using a, a ribbon uh, can also be something that could be uh, used. I also got involved in uh, a book that I'm working on that has a lot of uh, lavender and um, pale purple. And um, I found a couple of envelopes that I had that uh, have some really pretty um, uh, lavender flowers on them. And so I did take that uh, fused paper that I, uh, ribbon that I just showed you, and I took um, purple tissue paper and did a, um, a pleat, and then this can be a pocket. For this, uh, for this little envelope thing. And then I actually put some lace on it. I have different types of purple, to purple or lavender lace and used washi tape and a picture. So, and I opened the ends of these up and I plan to use this as a page in uh, this book that I'm working on that has uh, these soft colors in it. But the paper, I mean, the, the, the um, fabric that I used is just this thin uh, seam binding um, that is, um, you, you know, that you can very easily pleat it on the sides. Um, and your pleats don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be one pleat right after the other like the, like the basil. But this is just an example of where I took and um, used a different, um, took this tissue paper and uh, cut it up and I did some of them. I put this uh, stitch witchery or hem, uh, hem uh, uh, and fused it to the paper. Here's an example of where I fused it to a piece of muslin. And then I can take, and uh, here's where I did a decorative stitch on two fused pieces of the, um, of the tissue paper. And I uh, did quite, a not, you know, quite an extensive pleat on this one. And I used a lighter color, uh, paler purple to showcase a, a, um, a stitch. Here's another one where I took wrapping paper and this particular piece of lace had a, had uh, in, in the, um, well, I can't get that off, but in the middle, it was a piece of lace that was the same on both sides and had a, like almost an eyelet sort of a fabric in the middle that would make a really good, you know, you could take your decorative stitches in your wrapping paper and put it right down the middle. If you have um, ribbon that is the same on both sides. Now this is really pretty soft ribbon, eyelet-y kind of thing, but you can take that and do a decorative stitch on it and, and uh, show it off. And here I put it with the tissue paper as well. Here is a piece of, um, of decorative ribbon that uh, would make a great little tuck spot. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a really long strip it could be something that would um, actually, um, you know, make be smaller. In fact, I could cut this up if I wanted to and uh, make it. So here's an example of that wrap of that uh, ribbon that I took and cut off the wired part and actually started 
uh, raveling and used uh, and, and made the decorative, uh, put a piece of, of uh, actually this is one that did not have the ribbon on it. I actually added a piece of ribbon, but it's the two-sided ribbon. In other words, it's got a de decoration, little boxes in the middle, but then on either side, it has a pretty lace look. So this is actually a piece of um, cash register paper, and I was trying to fool with the width, the thickness of the thread and how much of it would show. And I have found that upholstery thread you would be, a, you know, would really show up uh, if you wanted to do a, wanted to show uh, a, a pretty stitch, um, then putting a, um, using a thicker thread. Now, um, upholstery thread, you would have to use a larger um, needle, um, probably a size 18 or 20 needle on your sewing machine or it won't come through. And if it is an upholstery thread that seems to have a little bit of a, a finish to it that makes it sort of um, not, it's not, it's not as pliable as regular thread, then you might have, I had some problems with some of the thicker upholstery thread. Here's an example of where I started to make a little girl's dress and I just put a little, uh, you know, I was just playing around with trying to figure out how to use all different sorts of things. And this is pattern paper uh, that I used for that. Um, I've taken, uh, continuing to work on um, this book that has a lot of lavender in it. Uh, I found a picture of, or I found a, this woman, it's called porch, Front Porch Prints. Front um, porch prints and this is um, where it's a be beautiful purple paper and this is uh, a kind of ribbon that is um, has little dangles uh, coming down it or it's, it's you know if you want to call it a ribbon but it was actually cut off of something uh, I don't know what anyone would have wanted to use this for but this is uh, what that is and um, so you could actually take that. I did that and put it on, I don't know if you can really see it. And then I took the wider um, seam binding and pleated it across here and then put a, um, a washi tape that I actually fused together with stitch witchery. So it's going to actually uh, end up, I'm not, sure exactly how I'm going to use it in the book, but this is an example of how you can take that seam binding and uh, come up with a nice combination. This is one that was in the basil kit. It was a dark purple, and so this is some of the paper from that uh, Porch Prince collection, and uh, I will put the um, information about about her shop at uh, below and then I took a wide piece of, uh, of um, pink um, lace and put it on here and another thing that I did with that wide lace is I found um, if I take the lace and cut off a piece seem to get it and just run a big stitch where I can gather this up if you run a large stitch then you can um, gather it up and um, then you would want to tie it on either end so that it won't come unstitched but it could make um, you know a, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, pleated this would be more of a of a gathered look but you could actually take it and turn it over and make a loose flower or a loose motif say on a on a card that has the pink in it and somehow use it uh, on there like that but here's the uh, example of what it came like uh, it's a wide two-sided uh, lace and believe it or not these have a right and wrong side this is the um, the wrong side and they have it folded so that the right side's on the inside. 
So when you go to put it down, it doesn't make a big difference, which is the right and the wrong side, but, I, but um, you know, uh, it has a better finish or trim if you are using, um, you know, if you're using this, this lace. Uh, and um, so those are some ways that using pleats on pages, using pleats for flowers, using pleats for maybe a folder or a fold over where I would do something, um, you know, like this for an insert for a journal page. So that's another example. I also have run across um, a paper or it's a um, it's a ribbon and it's got um, an inside and an outside and it's got a gold on it. It's a tan and a gold and boy does it ever like to um, it, it does a really good job of um, pleating and you can either have the pleat go on the end which means it would stick out more or go in the middle which would be just a nice a little decorative trim on say the side of a of a uh, page. Here's a uh, let's see I believe that this I'm not quite sure what paper pack this is maybe it's um, Amy Joy but uh, this is a page that I've been working that I was working on and I took the uh, that trim and put it across here and kind of made both of these like a banner uh, then I took a piece of fabric and sewed it to a piece of paper and made a um, uh, made a pocket. And you can buy, you know, strips, link strips of fabric um, in rolls, uh, big huge rolls. And some of it has is pretty neat. It has some pretty good, um, like little areas that you could sew together or use. Uh, I found this this roll at um, I think it was a fabric store. And it's these huge rolls like this and all the fabric is rolled and rolled and rolled and then it's put together with a rubber band. Um, someone said that uh, Tuesday morning carries things like this. Uh, my Tuesday morning doesn't have very much uh, in it. So I, um, uh, and they said, just said they were having a problem with the coronavirus and shipping, but it seems to me that other places they're, they're, um, I think I'm going to drive to one that's like 25 miles away and see if they're better than the Tuesday morning that I have here in my town. But here's where I took some coffee dyed paper. Um, actually it's, it's a thin paper. It might be more of a, actually it looks like it feels like it might be glassine that I did a finish on and did a cut decorative. And then this would make a nice, um, a nice tag. I would want a piece, you know, put a piece of card stock or something on the back to hide this. But this is just an example of how you can take pleated paper and make, you know, a tag that could go in the book. So that this one page here has a lot of different dimensions. It's got the fabric, uh, and it's got the card stock, and it's got glassine, and it's got uh, the thicker upholstery thread that I've used uh, for that. And then it's got the, the trim, uh, the gold trim that I did a zigzag stitch and a uh, pleat across the top of both of those. So I've got three different pleat uh, ideas going along. So then that's just one page of this foursome. So we'll see how, uh, I know probably it's pretty heavy, so I would probably need to uh, not put something so heavy on the other side. But uh, just an example of how you can use just a plain um, ribbon like that. Uh, I took this um, sorry silk and I uh, pressed it open and I was able to uh, make a, this is another book that I've been working on, and it actually takes 
cardstock, you know, like um, just different companies. Uh, this might be, I'm not, I'm not quite sure who this person, who this paper belongs to. But here's an example of where I took some trim and did a, um, did the zigzag stitch up here, pleating it as I go. And it kind of makes a little ruffle on the edge of the page. Um, and then a Kirby Teasdale. I believe this might be Kirby Teasdale paper. Uh, but uh, this one here is where I took blanket, uh, that blanket. It's, it's more of a shiny um, t uh, binding. And uh, it was in a, in a kind of a beige, which almost looks pink. And I was able to unfold the sari silk and make a border here and then use this. Um, and now I have a little uh, belly band here on this page that I can put something in. So even using things like, um, like sari silk, you can actually take, take it and it, it ends up being um, a good inch, maybe more or Inch and, inch and a quarter wide and can be used for, for, for different things. So those are just some examples. Um, I'll show one more. This is that fusible uh, stitch witchery. Uh, stitch witchery, this one here is really narrow, but it's what you put down between layers of, uh, for instance, with, with what I was using it for was on tissue paper, I took the tissue paper and cut it, and I was able to use uh, the stitch witchery. But you can also get, uh, these are hem tapes, where you take the hem tape and you actually fuse it to the, you know, to the fabric so that you don't actually have to needle and thread. So your um, uh, hems, if you have to make something shorter or longer, and there is, you know, you can certainly get these uh, lots of different places and um, that and an iron and you've saved yourself a lot of time with uh, using stitch witchery or hem binding or a hem tape, hem binding, um, that type of thing. Uh, this is another example of where I took that blanket and where it, what it came from, it says hem facing acetate bias. And then this says it's acetate and this says it's rayon. And um, it's a hem facing and you can do a lot with these. Um, of course it's used to sew uh, the binding around something. Um, it has this um, little fold on either side and what I did was I took the two pieces and I stitched them together to make a couple of tags. And this tag, I also used a sari silk. And this was a pretty piece of ribbon that's as long as it was. And it was in a bin and it was pretty and it went really well with this uh, acetate hem binding. So I uh, took it and I sewed the two pieces together and covered where I sewed it with with a um, with this with this stitching here. Um, another is where I took this this hem binding and I sewed the two together. And I wanted this particular picture came from a piece of um, wallpaper actually, or uh, it was in with the wallpaper bin, and it was a piece of uh, about this. So it must have been something that you. That, that was a repeat um, that you used as a, at the, as a border at the top or at the, um, you know, somewhere on a wall. And so I pulled that out and turned and did a pleat with a very thin piece of blue um, hem tape. If I call it hem tape, but it, it also is hem tape comes in lace as well. So I did a, a stitch around here using that pleat uh, to give it a more of a, of, a, of a finished look around with the, with the uh, 
kind of beach theme. So using hem facing, hem tape, um, rayon, or no, this says 100% acetate taffeta. So just depending on, you know, what, it just adds a little extra um, um, texture to what you're working on. And even though this is a tan, it almost feels, looks like it could be a, um, but you can buy the, them in kind of natural colors and um, make, you know, uh, come up with a lot, a lot of different ways to use the hem tape. Um, or the seam binding, or the blanket binding, or, um, you know, uh, however, whatever it's called. But I think that junk stores are a good place to buy this because you can get, get these, you know, for next to nothing. If they're open, they're less. Mine, my store has them for uh, 50 cents if they are, um, have never been opened. And um, people don't use this anymore. So a lot of estate sales where people used to make blankets and things would be good places uh, to, to see that. So that's just some examples of way to use hem tape for pleating or hem tape for uh, binding and uh, pleating and um, you know taking the concept from uh, Basil and making use of it in, um, in junk journals. Um, I only used a couple of sheets of this, you know, to, for, for some of the projects that I was working on. But, um, you know, you could actually even cut it off if you wanted to and, um, you, you know, use it as a trim of some sort. Um, it comes apart pretty easily, so you could actually even um, take it apart if you wanted to do something else with it, so. Let me know if you have any ideas uh, for how to do pleating and um, we'll come back and talk about this some more. So it was, thank you for coming and watching this video and I'm always up for new ideas, trying to find new, new ways of doing things. I appreciate your taking the time to watch with me and we'll talk again soon.